समीर सर एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर विल वेट टू मिनिट्स once the participants cross 250 we'll start the session okay sir good morning everyone i welcome you all of you on uh, fourth day of this uh, five days a week faculty development program on machine learning and deep learning applications in engineering and science so for this uh, first sessions we have resource person professor samir arora and today he will elaborate deep learning using lstm rnn in python now i request samir sir please proceed the session thank you so much sir good morning all of you just wait i am sharing my screen today we will talk about the deep learning through the lstm and rnn in the python so whenever we talk about any new term or any new techniques we generally start with the principles or the basic procedure how we can perform it how it works on today we will start with the some of the example first because the example i am giving to you is much more common into the nature we use it on the daily basis but we generally don't put emphasis on how this thing is working on so let us start with the example first so have you ever think about that how the google's auto complete predict the words which comes into the sentence we whenever we type anything onto the google search engine whether we are typing on the whatsapp or if we are using the google keypad so google suggest us this some of the words these words are captured on the basis of recurrent neural network suppose there is a, as we know that there is a large collection of the volume of words on the basis of used by the different users so if we are searching about what is the common food in delhi so this could be the case where the food was searched by the 1 million users before us so it will suggest us the best possible answer on the basis of search result of 1 million users who do it previously there is an another feature available in rnn which is updated recently that google try to identify the words on the basis of individuals acceptance suppose you have the tendency to use what after or starting in the starting of the next few lines so whenever you whenever you put a full stop so it will suggest you some of the words now these of the words would be available on to your your history only there are the two different cases in the first case is initially google used to do it on the basis of the search history of all the users who are doing such kind of words or the activities now they have incorporated the individual search engine it's mean they will give you a suggestion of the word on the basis of your search history 
so once you put up a word for the search there will be a it will be fed up into the rnn it will analyze the data by finding the sequence of words occurring frequently and build some model to predict the next word suppose you search uh, what is the best food to eat in las so obviously whenever you use a las the most possible word it will search out from the search engine and it will give us the result of vegas so these kind of searches are performed by the google through rnn so let us just go through what is neural network and how it is different from the rnn what are the different advantages of rnn over the neural network as we know that the neural network use the deep learning which consists of the layers connected to each other and work on the structure and function of the human brain it collect large amount of data as provided into the input layer and through the complex algorithm by providing the each feature of the data to a specific neuron these neuron provide a weight and through the activation function it give us the output suppose there is an input where we are providing the images of the two different breeds of the dog so after applying the weightage to each and every image uh, or the feature accepted by the each and every neuron it will design an algorithm and after the designing the algorithm it give us the input whether it would be a german shepherd or labrador so these kind of processes are done by the neural network so we can say that whatever the input we generally provide to to the neural network it takes the current input only the input which we are providing previously suppose you have changed the input at, at the next instance so the previous input will be excluded excluded out from the system and the last input provided by the user will be taken to design the algorithm whereas so we can say that all the decision which are designed into the neural network are based upon the current input only there isn't any memory about the past and no future scope we cannot easily identify on the if we are doing a sequence of activity so here comes the or generates the requirement of the neural network as we can see that the basic advantage of ne recurrent neural network or the neural network is it can handle the sequential data it consider the current input and also the previously received input it can memorize previous input due to the internal memory let us take an example whenever we go to the gym a gym instructor prepare a chart for the chart for each and every person so suppose he suggests you on the first day you go for the shoulder exercise on the second day you go for the bicep exercise and on the third day you have to go for the cardio so he maintain a sequence on on the basis of sequence he also suggest us the diet so whenever you put a such kind of information to the data so suppose you have to identify on the 350th day from the current current day what would be the type of exercise which i have to perform so he will evaluate all the previous data from the current date and will suggest what type of exercise you have to do on a particular day suppose you are doing these kind of exercise from the last one month and you skip a one day so what will happen so if you will skip such kind of information in neural network it will start the network or the algorithm from the initial or we can say it will start the algorithm from the scratch whereas recurrent neural networks take the values from the memory it means if the previous value was blank if we haven't come up for the exercise for a particular day it will go to the day before yesterday so so he will identify what was the exercise performed by a particular user on day before yesterday and he will suggest the exercise accordingly on the coming day so it has the advantage where it can store the data and suggest the upcoming activity on the basis of the stored values so we can say that initially what was happening in the neural network there was the one output suppose we are using a single input single output so there was the only one input it was going to the hidden layer the algorithm was performing at here at this position and we were receiving the output now here we can say that once it will operate the hidden layer in within the hidden layer it performs the several rules 
sorry several loops within the loop it identify the time steps here we can define the length of the time steps how backward into the time a system can move to estimates the changes into a particular variable suppose you are identifying a change into the stock price so there can be the different cases where we cannot even identify from the current value only so we have to look into the past what was the features or the things happened into the past so that we can evaluate what could be the next value of a particular stock price so these kind of loops we can design on the basis of time steps we can define a time step of one day two day five days 60 days depending upon the data which we have so whatever the time step we will define the loop will run for a particular time step and then it will give us the output so if i elaborate this i can say that suppose we have a, at a time t is equal to 0 we are initially present here xt is the input function and we have to evaluate the yt what would be the output at time t is equal to 0 initially we will start with the t is equal to 0 so we want to identify what would be the value of yt so the yt would be supported by the y t minus 1 what was the initial output and what was the value of c that was the in between activation functions which was calculated used for the similar input previously there are the different activation function evaluated for the different input also so the activation function adopted for the previous input will be used for calculating the next output as well as the output at the previous instance will also be used for that suppose we have to identify this hidden layer so hidden layer will be based upon the hidden layer at time t minus 1 so we cannot say the time in negative so if we can take here as the previous instance so if t will be 0 so we can 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 say that there won't be any negative case so whenever we start the recurrent neural networks we try to push a time step further ahead into the direction suppose we have the variable from 0 to 200 so we can say that if we are starting our time step from 30 it's mean we designing a network which have to look at the 30 previous instances so we will start our loop from the x equal to 30 so that it can review the previous 30 instances and predict the next value accordingly suppose if you start with the t is equal to 0 it will evaluate the previous instances so h t minus 1 for the and xt and will evaluate the y ht ht is the new state which we have to identify ht minus 1 is the old state and xt is the input which we are providing at particular time instance so similarly it will run the loop for the number of instances which we are designing into the model and evaluate the output accordingly now there are the different type of recurrent neural networks the first one is where we are providing a single input and we are getting the single output this type of networks we call it as the vanilla neural networks and there are the some of the cases where we are providing the single input but we are getting the multiple output like suppose we are doing the image captioning this is the one of the most advanced application of the rnn where we provides uh, different images to the model and on the basis of identifying the different features suppose there is a bat into the feature or the image a player is there who is holding a bat and we can observe a green field at the back so what could what would be that caption of a particular image so these kind of captions are suggested suggested by the rnn by identifying the different images so we can say that there is a single input which we are providing into the form of a image 
or there could be the multiple outputs it means there could be the different or multiple captions of a particular image some of the examples are type of neural network where we are providing a multiple inputs and we are getting a single output and another one where we are providing multiple inputs and we are getting the multiple outputs i will give you it with the help of the different applications of ann as when we say that the time series prediction so what would be the type of a neural network in the time series prediction what we are getting we generally there could be the case where we are providing the multiple inputs there could be the case we are providing the single inputs with the multiple data points and we are getting the single output so this would be the first type which we had discussed as the vanilla neural network image captioning i as i give you an example let's take another example suppose we have a image like this we are observing the ground at the bottom sky is there a dog and a ball so there are the four different features so there could be the case where the rnn can identify the caption of the image like a flying dog so it's mean a flying dog means a dog is not onto the ground it shows that the ground is certainly a position above than the ground so we can say a caption like flying dog we can say a dog playing with the ball as dog is there and the ball is there or there could be the title like dog catching a ball in the sky so if we say a title like dog catching a ball in the sky this would be much more descriptive and include all the features which are present into the image so these kind of this would be a type of a single input and the multiple outputs there could be a multiple captions with a single input next language processing natural language processing as we know that suppose you are watching a cricket match so whenever we watch a cricket match what we generally observe the curators sorry commentators generates a question onto our screens and after a few seconds they get the answers it it doesn't mean that each and every one typing or giving them answer through a messages or submitting their answer on a particular portals whatever the comments used by the or the submitted by the person who is watching a match they analyze such comments and identify who could be the winner of a particular match if this proposed who is the potential winner or which particular player is into the better position who is playing with the good confidence so they can identify they read outs the comments of each and every one who is watching the match or who is submitting their comments they analyze the text or the words characters present into their comments and they analyze and provide us the statement so this we called it as the sentimental analysis and the speech recognition is there is a new technique available where you can speak into a particular language and system will transform this language to another language suppose you are good in speaking english but if you move to a country where spanish is much more common as compared to english so you can use these devices where you once speak into english or the language in which you are comfortable the system will convert it into a next language so these are the major applications of rnn but there are the some of the problems which are occur into the rnn the first one is the vanishing gradient vanishing gradient means suppose when we are providing a weight to a particular feature of a input data but the weight the correction into the weight or whenever the next epoch will run what it will do it will generate a small error small error will be added into the initial weight suppose a small error is we calculate is del e divided by del w e where e is the error on we calculated out on the basis of actual output minus model output square of the actual output minus model output so the fraction of the weight which was divided by the fraction of the error it would be much smaller into the nature so we can say that suppose we get the value of del w 
is equal into point zero 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 one. So there won't be any significant change into the new weight of a particular neuron. So we can say that due to the lesser change into the weight, there will be a large number of epochs required to design a perfect model or the adequate model. This kind of problems we call is as the vanishing gradient. Another one is exploding gradient. We can say that the exploding gradient is generally the you can say it's opposite to the vanishing gradient, where when we have the larger value of del w, it means this value significantly causes a change into the value of the or the weightage provided to a particular neuron. So larger value will cause the skipping of the some of the information. There could be the case where you can skip or model can skip some of the information. So these kind of problems even occur into the RNN also. So how we can remove these problems? There are the three different solutions available for each vanishing gradient and exploding gradient. If we talk about the exploding gradient, we can identify the initialization, truncated back propagation, and gradient clipping. The most commonly used is the truncated back propagation. We divide see our input data into the different batches after identifying their pattern. So we run the RNN model on separately on each and every batch of a input data. So we can identify or we can reduce such kind of a problem. And in the vanishing gradient, either we can increase the, because as we know that weight is much more smaller into the nature, as either we can increase the weight of the each feature assigned to the each feature through a neuron or we can choose the significant activation functions or we can jump to the long short term memory networks most commonly used is the long short term memory networks let us discuss how the long short term or LSTM networks works. LSTM we can say that it's a kind of RNN only which is capable of long term dependency. It has a tendency to store the short term data for a longer period of time. All the RNN have the form of a chain of repeating modules of the neural network. In the standard RNN, the repeating module will have a very high simple structure such as it's given into the example. So this we call it as the hidden layer of LSTM. Hidden layer, initially what we are doing, we were receiving the in the RNN one, for the one feature we are receiving only the one signal. Here we are receiving the two different signal at a time, one from the previous input and one from the previous hidden layer. And on the basis of that, the previous input will suggest and work along with the next coming input, it will suggest or correlate the output with respect to the previous hidden layer and suggest the what could be the present hidden layer. So we can identify the sorry, so we can identify the next output. So we can say it works into the three simple steps. The first step is the forget the irrelevant part of the previous state. Select updated cell state value. And third is the output certain part of the cell, cell state. So let us discuss each and every step. We will take it with the examples. So first one is the whatever the information provided by the users or whatever the information is provided into the input identify what is the most vital input which we can store it out and what is the vague input so we can exclude it out so first step we can say in lstm is to decide which information to be omitted from the cell in that particular time step and it is decided by the sigmoidal functions there are the two different function which work at a time sigmoidal function and tangent edge sigmoidal function identify which is the information which is which could be the case which is not relevant for us and the tangent function identifies the information and gives the importance in the range of minus one to one suppose we have an example the first information is alice is good in physics 
full stop another sentence is john on the another hand another hand is good in chemistry next data input is john plays football well he told me yesterday over the phone that he had served as the captain of the college football team so when we have the previous output in the previous output it identifies the data on the basis of full stops so after the full stop it identify that initially the subject was alice in the first instance but after the full stop it identifies that the first subject is and isn't using anywhere or isn't involved anywhere into the next data so the previous output says that the this statement is irrelevant or it is not as much important for us so whenever there will be a next input at time t is equal to 1 so it identify the output and input x t is equal to x is equal to t minus 1 there was the two different information two different subject ls and a john but into the next step there was the information about the john only so what it will do it will subtract the information or exclude the information about the ls and the new subject will be the john only now it has removed some of the information next step is how much this unit add to the current state now there is a large amount of data stored into the current states and the system has to identify which information of the out of this can be stored so this type of function are provided by the tangent test h which give us the weightage of the values in the range of minus 1 to 1 it assigns the weightage in the range of minus 1 to 1 or we can say that in the term of the level of importance so the input which is received by the next state will be equivalent to the weight assigned at the previous hidden layer and the upcoming input layer plus the activation function so we can identify the importance through the tangent function weightage previous hidden layer and the next input plus activation function so the information if you look here the information was next column john plays the football he told me yesterday over the phone that he had served as the captain of the college football team so we can say that the most important information is two different section john plays the football and he is the captain of his football college football team these two are the most important information and we can say that the least important are the he told me yesterday over the phone he had served as so this kind of statement are the least important so we can omit these information from the stored data only the information which will pass through the gate input gates was the important information that is john plays the football and he was the captain of college football team this information will only pass through the input gates these are the input gates so at the last step what part of the current cell take it to the output so we have omitted some of the information and what could be that part of the information which will make the output we can identify it through the importance so first we have to run a sigmoidal layer which decide what part of the cell make to the output and we have to run the tangent h to get the values in between minus 1 to 1 to multiply with the output sigmoidal function so the output gate will be multiplied by the tangent h ct which we obtained from the previous value the ct which we got from here will be multiplied with the output gate here so we can get the information at time t for the hidden layer we get the information and this hidden layer will generate the output so suppose output is there john played a tremendously well against the opponent and won his team for his team for his contribution brave dash was awarded the player of the match so we have to provide the output on the basis of the data supplied previously so whenever we identify output system will identify what was the word 
previously assigned before the blank space a brave we can say that it's an adjective so after the adjective it's it would be better to provide a noun as it's an adjective so noun which we can provide the best output would be the john so john brave john was awarded player of the match so in such a way a system identify what are the different values stored at the previous instances and how we can identify the value at the next instances so if there will be another information there will be another input at time t is equal to 1 t is equal to 2 it will be generated and the system will run throughout the speech let us take an example of this initially i have stored this some of the stock price data the stock price data generally includes let me show it to you there are the various opening price closing price high price low price and each and every day of a particular stock with respect to the date so we can say that one of the application of rnn was the estimation of time series data so here we have a time series data where the data is in the range from the 2012 to 2016 i have the different data points of 1 to 5 it 1 to 5 it data points ranging from the 2012 to 2016 when for each date i have the opening price closing price highest price lowest price in a single day and the volume sold out in the market for a particular stock so i have stored this data into my google drive we have discussed yesterday also how how we can read the data from the drive so after importing the necessary libraries like import numpy as np import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt import panda as spd so i have uploaded these kind of drives so next step is to upload the data which i have stored in my google drive again i will put this command there will be a activation code will be generated once i will enter a code here drive will be mounted with the code mounted with the collab so next step is the provide a location of the code location of a particular file where you have stored you can give a, any name to the file i have maintain it as stock under underscore train so i am giving a separate data for the training and for the testing so stock underscore train will be pd dot read pd it's mean it read reading the file using the pandas pd dot read csv file i have stored the data in the psv file at a particular location into the collab notebook as stock underscore price dot csv once the system will read the file next step is to provide a set of the data it means there could be the case where large amount of data is available into the file but i want to predict a particular variable only so i have defined it for all the rows variable which i want to predict is from column 1 to 2 for all the rows and the print train so it will give me the a particular value what was the value so this would which column it would be it would be the second column as we know it starting from the zero so zero one and value on to the right hand side will be omitted out so it will give me the single value of second column which was the this one opening price of a particular stock and each and every day it's mean i am here predicting only the what could be the opening price of a particular stock at a particular day i can predict it for 2017 2018 because till 2016 i have data using that data i will predict the value for the next upcoming year of a particular date so as we know that there is a significant variation in between the data next step is to design a data or 
fit or transform the data in a particular range. How I can define it into a particular range using the sklearn from sklearn dot preprocessing import minimum maximum scalar. So I have used a minimum maximum scalar to transform the data in the range of zero to one. So the minimum value suppose it's showing here like three twenty nine point eight three. Suppose it's the minimum value from two thousand six twelve to two thousand sixteen. So that value will be assigned zero. And if I have a value like seven ninety three point seven, if this is the maximum value, this will be assigned one. Accordingly, all the values will be transformed in the range of zero to one through the minimum and maximum value. After that, print train set scale. Initially, I named it as train set. The next one is the scaled train set, where I have converted it into zero to one. So this will be the final value, which come out after the scaling. Now, next I have to generate a loop. As we know that we were talking about the time step for which a system has to look into the past. What was the different or the fluctuation occurring into the data points at the previous instances? So I have divided this divided it to x train, y train. For i in the range of sixty to one to five eight, we know that there was the total number of data points one to five eight. I am running a for loop in the range of sixty to one to five eight. So whatever the value present at i is equal to sixty would be my first instances. So I can say that I have a time step of sixty with the one output. Here I have a time step of sixty. So the value present at sixtieth instance will become my first value. So I can say that that will be the time at t is equal to zero. So whenever that at time t is equal to zero will be identified, it will be identified on the basis of previous sixty value. So when I will train the x so x train dot append through the scaled value, I am using the scaled value i minus sixty. So it cannot be on the to the negative side. So the minimum value required for the i is sixty. So it could be zero for the zero instance from zero one two three four. So I can say that so this value this is at the sixtieth instance. This would be my first value of training of x, because previously value will be only used. To train the value of x, I have decided the sixty as the time step. So if I will move to the sixty first value, so previous sixty value it would be from the second value to sixty first value. So that will be used to train the value present at the sixty first step. Accordingly, it will go for all the values, and y train will be starting from the zero to all. In that, with that, I will train my x and the y values, and this will be arranged in an array. That x train, y train will be np dot array x train, np dot array y train. So I will get the value of trained scaled x value. These are the scaled value which is trained now. Print y, I will get the single value. For the price, next is to I reshaped it. As we know that the reshaping would be, if we have a matrix of three into two, I can convert it to two into three. The total size of the matrix should remain the same. We can convert rows into the columns. If, suppose I, if I have a matrix of four into four, we, how I can reshape it? I can convert it into six into twelve. Six, sorry, six into two, two into six. So the Ultimate shape of the array will remain the same. So I have reshaped it, the x train, as the x train shape zero, and the x train shape one. So I will get the data like this. After reshaping, next is to generate the model. Initial the these initial commands are for the Visualization of our data, and the we can say that it's a pre-processing of the data. Suppose I am doing an activity.
we generally classify our data into three different parts. The first one is the data. pre-processing the steps we have discussed till now is that data belongs to the data pre-processing second is the model generation now we will design the model and third is the visualization we, we generally divide the model into these kind of structures So now we have to design the model. So we will import the sum of the layers and the models from the Keras library. So from Keras.model import sequential. Sequential is the library which will take the instances in a particular sequence. So it is the most important part of the library which we have to use. Keras.models import sequential. From Keras.layer import dense. Keras.layer import LSTM. Keras dot layer import dropout. So these libraries we will import from the Keras layers of the library. Now we will design a regressor as sequential. It will take all the information from the X train and the Y train. Now regressor dot add LSVM unit is equal to 50. Return sequence true. Input shape will be X train dot shape one. Now what it suggests, it gives us the how we can train our data on the basis of trained data, number of units which we have to look into the previous instances. So here I can say I have designed the four different layers. It means at each and every step, four different layers of work at a time and each layer, suppose the 50 units at the first instance, 50 units will be used for the analysis and if it will identify a sequence is whether it's a sequence is true or not and reshape the input accordingly and next is drop out the data it's most the important one is the dropout it's mean how much the percentage of neuron we are dropping out at the previous instances suppose we run a particular command at the first instance so we observed that there is a sum of the information which is irrelevant which is not required at the second position so we run it for the 50 times. So we at the first instance, we identified that there is a, some information which is not relevant. So maximum dropout we referred here is that 20% of the neuron. So whatever was the initial size of the neuron out of that 20% of the neurons will be dropped out for the next instance. Again, it will move to the next layer. It will evaluate if it's true it will drop out the another 20 neurons. Next state will drop out another 20 neurons. I want to stop it at the fourth layer. So there is no need to move to the return or back instance. So it will stop out, stop at this particular instance with the again drop out of 20% of the neurons. If I will provide a command like return sequence, it will again move to the previous statement and identify whether the sum of the information is important or not. As we have discussed, it provides the importance or the level of importance in the range of minus one to one. So each and every case, it will rescale the importance, assign the value in the range of minus one to one and identify which is the value having the least importance. So it will drop the 20% of that neurons having the low level of importance. So we can design the n number of layer accordingly. So after identifying the adequate information, the output generated, we stored the output into the dense layer. So we need a one output. So it will be unit equal to one. There will be a single output from the multiple instances. Now, what was the basic function of the 50 here? Suppose we have, there could be the case where there is a long instances. Suppose we are predicting or we are doing the natural language processing. There could be the case where there is a long sentences. So what could be the size of characters or what could be the number of characters which are needed to be 
memorized by the system at a single instance so we can vary these kind of characters of memorization at each and every instances so we can increase this value or reduce this value once we increase the value there will be the larger memory space that will be consumed now the next step is the regressor regressor dot compile there are the different optimizers are available which we can use i have used adam here and loss will be measured through the mean square error once i will run the model that is regressor dot fit x train y train for the epoch 100 there will be the 100 iteration for which the model will run and the batch size 32 batch size 32 here represents the instances at which the model will generate the output once i will as i know that the model was running from the 60 to 1 to 58 so if you will remove the first 59 instances there will be 1198 data points so there will be 1198 data points are there so for each for each data point a output will be represented after estimating the 32 data points there won't be a single output after each and every output so output will be generated after the one batch size so i have defined the batch size as 32 so once the 32 data point will be analyzed a one output will be generated so system will generate the output like this so it is showing the how much time is occurred to estimate all the data points So one one nine eight data points estimated at the first iteration for seven seconds, five seconds, five seconds, seven seconds. So it may take some time depending upon the size of the data. So there will be the hundred iterations. So what I will get at the end. So I have trained our model initially. So using the training data which I have provided through my Google Drive. the model is now being trained next what i have to do i have to repeat the some of the steps for the test data again i will upload the data which is stored as the test data stock underscore test i will read it through my drive which i have stored with the name of stock underscore price underscore test again i will divide it into a columns which i have taken up from the test data initially now if i look here i cannot directly use the test data against the training data not a trained data is being modified modify means the error element information has been dropped out and it is scaled into the nature so what i will do i will initially concatenate the stock trained data i open it stock test data and i will subtract out the total data from the stock test data so it will give me the next input because this input will be based upon the scaled as well as on to the trained data again i will run the similar loops ranging from 60 as we have the lesser data points into the test data initially there was the larger chunk of data we used for the training smaller chunk we are using for the testing again it will start from the 60 move up to the 80 data points why i have to predict out so the in array there will be only the x test will be converted into array array will be reshaped again so i will name it the x value which i obtained from the text as the predicted stock price and i will transform into a scaled value so next is the last step of our last step of our coding that is the visualization of data i have predicted a value so i want to plot a graph i have already uploaded a library at the top that is the matplotlib.pyplotspt so i will design a plot here plt dot plot test set that would be the 
observed values of y which i have uploaded at the time of testing i will make a color of this i want to segregate these value so we can easily visualize it i will make it with the red color and providing a label as the observed price of a stock and another one is the predicted stock price i will refer it with the blue next is the label will be the predicted price so i want to provide a title to the graph a stock price prediction x label will be represented as time y label stock price plot legends plot show so once i will plot show it will show a graph like this where red line is represented the observed price and blue line represented the predicted price suppose i want to check whether the epochs provided by me is significant or not so if you look at the loss occurring at the epoch 100 is 0.0013 199 was 1001500140016 0016. so epoch is still reducing into the nature the loss is still reducing into the nature it shows that if i will increase the number of epochs while training my model it will certainly increase the accuracy of the model we generally try to stop the epochs where in the previous three iterations we get the similar value of error or error is not reducing into the nature but here we observed that at the 100 epoch also the error is still reducing it not become constant so we it mean we can still increase the number of epochs which will help us into the increasing the accuracy of the model so if you look at the graph here initially here it is increasing it's also increasing it has a certain constant values at the both the location again is increasing it start reducing also a graph is started reducing but whenever there is a increase we observe a increase into the price of a stock there is a certainly delayed increase we observed into the predicted price so in order to minimize these kind of differences or the increase the accuracy either we can increase the number of epochs or the iteration which we have provided or we can change the time steps which we have provided while designing the for loop so we can change these kind of steps in order to get the better accuracy of our model so is it i think is it clear to each and everyone or we will move to another example i won't take much more time in the next example here i have the sum of the data i have given you the i said that the one of the example of rnn is sentimental analysis or the analysis of data comments provided by the users suppose a tailor being launched into a market a company or a producers launched a trailer of the movie so what are the different type of comments a user propose on to the twitter on other than any other different platforms youtube twitter so these kind of comments are analyzed and producer or the directors can identify the picture would be a hit in a future or not or there will there could be the case where they will have the losses so they can identify these kind of predictions or do can these kind of predictions through the sentimental analysis for that i have initially imported the libraries which are required so keras dot p processing import sequence i have imported sequence sequential import sequential layers i am importing dense dropout activation embedding lstm convolution one day layer max pooling one day layer and the data i have imported out from the keras library only that is imdb data the mainly dense layer or the dropout layer which generally used to avoid the overfitting of the data so it help us into the obtain the better accuracy initially i am here defining the features of the different layers in the embedding there are the maximum feature are 20000 length of each feature is 100 and embedding size i am providing the 
for the convolution lstm i am designing the size 70 training i am divided it into a training of 30 batches it's mean output will be generated after training of the 30 different inputs and initially i am running it with the 20 epochs so you can say that if i will run the model with the only one epoch two epochs there could be the case where you will observe the large amount of error so you can increase the number of epochs on the basis of error observed by you so again as we have done earlier x train y train x test y test will be loaded from the number with the maximum features divide decide earlier the maximum feature we have decided as 20000 so it will train the x on the basis of length decided and marked it as train sequence and test sequence will also be trained on the basis of length x train will be equal to sequence dot pad sequence x train maximum length is equal to maximum length for both the training and the testing and then we have to build the model there now i have used the activation function relu here relu is most commonly used activation function in the neural networks activation type i am providing for the lstm is sigmoidal losses will be measured through the cross entropy and after running the model if you look here i run the model for the 25000 different sample data sets but having the two epochs only the first epoch took the time as the 71 second second epoch took the time as 78 second and the error was observed observed in the first 0.8628 in the next 0.8528572 and if i will plot the graph using the similar kind of library like matplotlib.lib matplotlib.pyplot i am plotting between the accuracy as well as the loss so there are the only two different data points as the model run for the two epoch and you will observe there is a huge difference the accuracy points the accuracy point varying from the point around 0.99 to 1 whereas the validation accuracy varying from the 0.85 to 0.83 as we have observed here the accuracy is varying from 84 to 82 so there is a, if you look at the difference there is only difference of 0.15 but this is a huge difference if we say we have only the two data points so these kind of differences we can improve with the improving the accuracy let us change the number of epochs here suppose i will change it into 20 and i am running the model again it may take few seconds or i can say that it may take few minutes to initialize or generate the output it has started now while it's running you can ask any doubt is there if any so we will come back to it after some time yes we are using the min max scalar for the normalization of data can we select the particular neuron in the hidden layer for drop out manually we don't have to select it manually we have only have to provide the percentage of the neuron which you want to drop out at each and every instance so if you give the 10% of neuron 1% of neuron 20% of neurons so whatever the 20% of neurons having the low level of importance will be dropped out at each and every instance you just have to provide the percentage of neurons which you want to drop out they
someone as i am working on the winner prediction module in the cricket i want to use lstm network for that purpose yes you can use it effectively you can use the sentimental analysis the code I, which i have shared with discuss with you for the sentimental analysis you can use it most of the people use it for the analysis of the twitter data suppose a post will be shared by prime minister of our country so there will be a millions of comments suggestions likes dislikes on to that particular comment so the percentage of people like that particular statement issued by the prime minister whether the sufficient information is there or not so these kind of predictions or what could there could be the positive impact of that prediction or not or the statement issued by the prime minister so these kind of analysis we generally do through the twitter data also epoch is generally the iteration the number of times we want to train the model yes actually we design the epoch on the basis of error observed suppose initially you start to run your model with the less number of epochs we try to try to run the epochs until unless we get the constant errors suppose you run it for initially for the 10th epoch and at each and every epoch error is reducing into the nature again you will increase the number of epochs suppose you increase it for the 25 but you observed it after the 15th or the 17th iteration the loss is becoming constant so there is a no need to run the model for greater than the 17 epoch as from the 15 to 17 you already observed that the error has become constant so once there will be a constant error we can say that that would be the sufficient number of or the adequate number of epochs for a particular model yes we can also use for rnn for the disease identification it depend upon the type of data if you have the data in term of the strings integers you can use it if you have the data in term of the images it would be better if you you will use the convolution neural network suppose we have the data of stock price of the one year for each day so can we use yes you can use the stock price data even if you have the one year data it's been if you have the data one year that will be the case where you have the 365 data points or you can subtract the weekends as the market doesn't show any value at the weekends so the data points which you have you can use it for the prediction also but we can say that whenever we have the less amount of data points there could be the case where the accuracy would be lesser into the nature as we go with the larger number of data points there will be a case where we are moving with the higher accuracy or with the low damages or the epoch losses if you are using the hidden layer how we can select the number of hidden layers you can define the number of hidden layers on the basis of relevance of the data suppose you opt after obtaining the 50 characters suppose i have a sentence which is average length of the sentences of 50 character so i define a length so there could be the case we generally assume in the sentimental analysis if we have a sentence statement most of the words will be of we call it as delimiter words or the mingling words mingling words that has a usage into the making of sentence but it is these are not the effective words so depending upon the length of the sentence we can decide the what could be the length of the hidden layer because we generally assume that the 50% of the words are mingling into the nature they are helping us to make the sentence but they doesn't pass any significant information to the next layer yes we can use the lstm algorithm for medical applications also why did we skip the first 60 data points actually as we have discussed lstm model used to train itself through the basis of previous instances 
what are the information provided or how the a particular stock price is varying at the previous instance if you are using the neural network it will use the previous value only it's mean the current value will be act as the input to the next output only but at the lstm or the rnn we use the large number of data or the we can use the past data for which could be act as the input to the sorry output to the next input so initially we didn't skip out the first 60 data points we use the first 60 data points as the input or the input of previous instances to read out the fluctuation into the next input suppose we want to read out the what could be the value of stock price at the 61st instances so for the 61 61st instance the previous 60 value are taken as the input value in order to predict the output at the 61st instance we are not skipping it but we are using it as the past data or we can say that system is memorizing that data yes we can use the lstm rnn for the disease prediction also actually each and every the there are the different compilers available into the libraries suppose we uses adam adam is most frequently used if we have the data into the form of the integer values and suppose if we have the data into the term of characters or the into the form of letters or the words so relu is most commonly used compiler so you have to select the compiler on the basis of type of data points for sentimental analysis from where we can get the real twitter data twitter data are generally available into the some of the libraries predefined libraries you can look into the kaggle just like the google collab there is another platform is available that is kaggle you can download the certain amount of data from the kaggle libraries also you can also predict the value for one month you can predict the value for the one year or the one day also actually we when we talk about the twitter data we generally doesn't collect the data all the data from the single account for one instance we collect the data for all the users who has commented on a particular data suppose if you will collect the data from the one account only so each and every user has a tendency to reflect to a particular information in a single way only suppose you are supporting a particular political party so at each and every information supplied by a particular party in each and every case what you will do you will support it because you are in liking or you are supporting that party so information provided by that party will be or the comments shows that you are into the positive side of that party so if we have to identify the total analysis of the market with respect to the a decision or the comment issued by a particular political party or any celebrity we have to collect the data from the different accounts because different account has have the different kind of words or the perceptions about the information which is coming from the other end for satellite image processing if you have the data into the geospatial data points we can use it if you have the data points in term of the images i would say that you must prefer the cnn is there any concept related to memory other than lstm both the lstm and rnn are working on to the storage of memory but as we have discussed there are the certain issues with the rnn like if we have the shorter instance of memory which is coming at a larger length suppose i will give you an information like 
I moved to a France. I am generating a statement like I moved to a France. The the French people have a tendency to do these kind of activities, and at the end, I will say that the French people are most commonly speak Spanish. So for the RNN, there is hard to identify the impact of Spanish with respect to the me, because initially I use the sentence "I move to France," and there isn't any word related to France in between. Uh, there is a vague word or vague sentence, and at the end, after suppose fifty or sixty character, I have would I have used the word Spanish. So there could be the case. Where the RNN will lose the information about the France, which I have used a hundred characters back. So, in order to minimize such kind of errors, we move to the LSTM, which have a tendency to store the shorter information for a longer instance. These shorter information are stored in for a longer duration in the LSTM. clustering is useful for disease prediction clustering we cannot use for the disease prediction but we can use it for the identification of the symptoms only yes i will take an example of disease analysis also in the next lecture Amir sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, it is eleven fifteen. Uh, we'll take uh, two to three more queries. We'll take two or three more queries. So your voice is breaking out. Yes. Yes. Samir sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I drop the message in chat box. One second. Okay, just I will look into the code whether it is completed or not. So, if you look here, the code is still running out. the error has reduces to in now initially if you look the accuracy which we are observing here is 0.8144 now at the 30th epoch accuracy has increased up to 0.9964 and where we are getting the trend value it was in between the 0.92 to 1 so we are reached to a much more closer value as compared to our training value so we can say that by increasing the number of epochs we can improve the accuracy of our model so i will take one more question only there was the question like can cnn work for the huge data set obviously cnn is cnn is designed for the huge data set only if you have a lesser data set better to try with the normal neural network how much data set is required for the cnn greater will the data set better it would be the accuracy of the model we cannot dis define what would be the adequate data set for a, uh, to model the rnn or cnn greater would be the data greater would be the accuracy for the speech recognition generally we always prefer to go with the higher data set or the data set which includes almost all the words at least for a one instance which we generally use for the 
at the multiple instances suppose you want to convert a language into another language so if there will be a word which is not present into the training so that particular word wouldn't be able to translate it into another language so greater will be the data better would be the translation we can also use it into the agriculture problems also what are the numbers 0.0809 which we obtained after printing the first column of excel sheet if you talk about the if you are talking about the excel sheet excel sheet contains the data for the different dates what was the opening price closing price price high value low value of the stock and the total number of stock price or the stock distributed or sold into the market in a single day so i think sir no more new question is there so <clears throat> Samir sir, thank you for uh, elaborately discussing these techniques. Deep learning using LSTM RNA in a fundamental coding. I hope that all the participants uh, get a little bit exposure, and I'm sure uh, they will apply in their uh, regular research work. So thank you, Samir sir. For joining with us, and thank you to audience also. Uh, we'll start next session at twelve o'clock. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now we'll close the session, and we'll meet at twelve twelve o'clock.